Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check out Farmini from Loki. This is for one to four players, taking about 15 minutes to play, and it's for ages five plus. And in Farmini, this is a really simple drafting game where you're going to have four cards out in front of you most of the time, and you're going to draft one of those cards and then put that card into your farm. But it's not going to be that easy because you're going to be trying to get animals and corn and trying to keep your animals safe from the wolves that will come up on the cards. So you're going to have to build enclosures. Uh, very light, very simple, but is it very good? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Farmini. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule booklet. Eight pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. And the last two pages are just the solo variant, and also some different, some different ways you can make the game slightly more complex uh, once you've learned how to play the game. So in Farmini, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be building yourself a farm and scoring points for the different corn fields that you have fenced in and also the different animals that you have fenced in but it's not going to be that easy because scattered throughout the deck there are going to be wolves and these wolves will scare away and eat your pigs and all your different animals uh as long as unless they are inside of the fence so what am i talking about let's show you how it works so on your turn what you're going to do is you're going to have four cards to pick from out here you're always going to have four cards except towards the end of the game you'll have slightly less uh the starting four cards will have this ring around the outside which is why i left them face up so here's my starting cards you know what i'm going to go right here for that uh some rules there are some minor rules. So first and foremost, you couldn't do this because the fence has to be touching a fence. Pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, you don't score any points unless you close something off. So right now, this would be worth two points, but only if I can enclose this somehow. There's also a uh, way you can lose a point at the end of the game. If like, So if I had a card here, 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 if I had like nine cards here, but the one in the middle wasn't there, you lose negative one for that. I doubt it's going to happen to most people, but it could. So now uh, let's pretend it gets back to me, and maybe I want to try and close this out or make it bigger, so I might do that. So now I got three in this cornfield, which is great. Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get and animals that will pop up now with animals when you take that you actually just discard the card and you grab yourself boom one of these tokens so i can place it on any one of my feeding spots so i have three feeding spots right here so let's see which one's probably gonna be the easiest to close let's try that one right there so i put my chicken right there draw the next card it's another goat so yeah i'll take a goat sure i'll put a goat right here and yes you can have a goat and a chicken in the same pen doesn't make a difference if you're playing the advanced game then you can score some more extra points by doing that sure i'll take a pig put a pig out here let's see what else we got oh that's actually a starter farm which is why there's a farm on it another goat not gonna take that let's go ahead and try and close this little enclosure off Let's just skip forward a little bit until we get to a wolf. Oh no, we got ourselves a wolf. So as soon as this card enters play, it is bad for anyone who has a wolf that is not in an enclosed area. So right now, or not, excuse me, not a wolf, uh, but for a goat that is not in an enclosed area, because this wolf is hungry for goats, which means he's going to eat all the goats that are not inside the pen, which means, bam, eaten, gone. It goes back into the box. You don't get it back. So it's a risk reward thing there. Anywho, you're going to continue to do this. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, going back and forth until you completely run out of cards. Uh, so let me do this, and let's just show you how the scoring works. So scoring-wise, right now, I would have one, two, three, four points for the cornfields. I don't get any points for these two because they're not in enclosed areas. I also don't get any points for the animals, but you do score one point per animal you have if you have them enclosed. So let's pretend that I had, you know, this right here going on, and I would score, this would be five points right now. And that's pretty much the entire game. You're going to continue to go through. There'll be wolves. There'll be animals. Sometimes there's double animal cards where you'll actually get to pick up uh, two animals as opposed to one animal. And at the end of the game, you're going to tally up the points. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of Farmini. Now, there also is a solo version of the game. It's relatively simple as well, except when the wolf appears, he is uh, actually going to frighten almost all the animals, which means that 
Any animals you had up here in this row are going to then immediately go away, and then you would also just do your regular thing where if it was a pig, this pig would be gone. And, uh, yeah, you'd go like, oh, look, you did great. Oh, you're a terrible farmer. That sort of deal right there. If you want to play the more advanced version of the game, which I think most people will once they get this game, you'll get bonus points if you have the same animals in, uh, in an enclosure. And last but not least, I do want to mention this is, let's pretend that I had this going on right here. This would actually be bad. I would get zero points for this corn because the animal obviously would eat the corn because they're closed in there. So this right now would be worth one point as opposed to the four points it was worth before. But that in a nutshell is what you're going to get inside of Farmini. Oh, right then. Farmini from Loki. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros. Let's go with the cons. First on the con side, one to four players. Er, somewhat restricted player count. Uh, also on the con side, the solo version of the game is just a try to beat your high score type of thing. And, oh, you're a 32, you're a good farmer, but you can use improvement, which is not personally how I like solo games, but that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Uh, there's not many interesting choices to be made in this game at all. It's like you have four cards to pick from, and it's like, oh, this one's got a pasture on it, this one's got a piece of corn on it, this one's got a chicken, I guess I'll take the chicken. Oh no, the next card, my chicken's gone. Like, and that's my biggest con with the game. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I didn't think the game was that good. I thought it was okay. Everything about this game is okay to mediocre. Nothing about this game really stand out to me. This is one of those games that you tell me, talk to me about it in like six months and be like, what? Oh yeah, I kind of remember that game. And, and that's what I think most people are going to think about this game. It doesn't do anything great. It doesn't really do much good. It's just, it's just so vanilla which is what i hate from children's game i hate when when children's games are just there and this game with a, a little bit extra added into it could have been a pretty solid game but they stopped for some reason and that's my biggest con of this game and to put it into perspective i play a lot of games in my classroom i play a lot of games with kids i played this with some older kids i played this with some younger kids and what i always do after i play games with kids they all thought it was okay they all were like oh yeah it's fun i, I enjoyed it so I always ask, oh, you liked it? Would you rather play this or would you rather play Dragon's Breath? Would you rather play this or would you rather play Sequence? Would you rather play this or would you rather play Uno? And I'll ask for five or six games so they can, so I can kind of get like a mental ranking of where they rank this game. And pretty much every single game that I threw out for every single kid, they were like, yeah, I'd probably rather play that other game instead of that one. And that's all you need to know. And I look over here at this shelf. It's like my kid's shelf. It has tons and tons of games. And I look and I see probably 30 to 50 games just boom right off the top of my head that I like way, way better than this. Not like it's like close, but it's like they're just leaps and bounds better than this game. And that's because this game just doesn't do enough. Now, I know you can argue and say it's for ages 5 plus, And so they're working with their hands tied behind their back a little bit. But so are a lot of these other games. And this game is just so vanilla. The artwork doesn't stand out. Uh, like the gameplay doesn't stand out it's just most of the time the choices you're making are not that interesting at all you don't really feel like oh cool i'm building this farm and there's neat stuff like like that that would have been like a hobbit thing like uh, and that's uh, you know i don't want to compare them to hobbit because that's unfair because this is only the third game they've released in this children's line of low-key but just you could have spruced this game so much by making the farms look interesting putting farmers on the farm putting watering holes all these little tiny details you could have included into the artwork would have made this game have more visual appeal and i think it would have made the kids like the game better and it would have like me make like the game slightly better now that being said there is a, a slightly more advanced version of the game you can play where you're trying to get specific animals matched up which makes the game slightly more interesting but it's still slightly something i don't want to play that much um, I really don't want else to tell you on the cons. It's very light. Uh, let's just get to the pros. And it's okay. It's an okay game. It's very light. Very simple. Easy to learn. Easy to teach. You're probably not going to need the rules more than once or twice. Um, it works. It's not going to outstay. It's welcome. Kids will like it. But there's lots of stuff that kids are going to like that is better than this game in my personal opinion and in the end farmini is not a game i can recommend to anybody just end of the conversation this game really should not have seen the light of day in my personal opinion it just doesn't do enough it needed more added to the box and uh they didn't do it so unfortunately farmini from loki i really like the other two games that loki came out with sos dino great one check that out and the pressure luck game which is spectacular really like those games this one though definite dud you're going to want to pass on this one. 
If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Or support the channel, click on that little Amazon Associates link down below. Buy anything on Amazon, throws a couple pennies my way. Really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know when's the last time you hit a dud when you're playing uh, when you're playing a new game. For me personally, I'm looking around. I, ha I got a whole bunch of games back from Origins. And, uh, yeah, I guess this game. This game would be the last dud that I played. But let me know in the comments below. What's the last dud you played? As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.